Did you know that this red hot ingot of copper can be turned into a piece of copper tubing over six miles long? Well, today we're in Fulton, Mississippi, and we're going to show you how copper tubing is made. This odd looking submarine is actually stretching that red hot ingot of copper tube 190 feet in length. They call this the mother tube. And at the Mueller Copper Tube Company, they stretch out up to 900 of these mother tubes each day. That will eventually be stretched into 3 8 inch copper tubing that will be used to build plumbing lines in your new house. In order to make that many tubes, they have to melt down a lot of copper, up to 1 million pounds each day. So Jim, where does the copper come from to make tubing? Well, the copper comes primarily from two places. It'll either come from industrial users, like what you're holding there comes from wire manufacturers that actually wind motors. And so we're really big on recycling here. So that's one of our primary objectives. The other place it comes from is out of the ground. It's mined and it's, it's poured into either ingot or it's plated into what is called a cathode process, which you'll see. What happens next? First thing we do is we're going to do a quality check of the metal and make sure that it is what it's supposed to be as far as the purity level we're looking for. So what he's going to do here is he's basically going to take a sample? That's correct. And he's going to send it up to our metallurgical lab and we're going to test it for about 19 different uh, elements to make sure that it's what it's supposed to be. The goal is a final product that's 99% pure copper. Melting down 1 million pounds of copper each day requires a lot of heat and two very large furnaces. This one stands over 90 feet high and reaches temperatures in excess of 2,000 degrees. So Jim, after the copper is dumped into the furnace, what happens next? We're going to heat it up to about 2,300 degrees and it's going to become liquid. We're going to carry it through a system of troughs where the metal is actually going to flow into a large holding furnace where we're going to put about 78 tons of metal, molten metal. And that's what we're going to use to actually go into our casting process where we're going to make big logs that look like trees of solid copper. Now, what percentage of this copper is actually recycled? Uh, right now, about 35 percent. But we're shooting for 50 percent. The environment's very important to us, and that's one of the reasons we built this facility. So, Jim, I've, I've seen a guy take a, a long metal pole with a log on the end of it and scrape some stuff off the top of the molten copper. What's he doing? Now, that, that's what we call our slagging process. In reality, all it's doing is the metal, all the impurities flow to the top. And so we have people actually take those impurities off the top by the means that you saw, which is a big piece of wood on the end of a steel pole. The reason we use wood is because it burns oxygen, which we don't like to have oxygen in our metal, so it's environmentally friendly as well. Jim, I heard you mention at the end of this process, we actually end up with a copper log. Can you explain a little bit about how that works? Yeah, the copper log happens when we actually pour the metal into a mold. We cool it down and it becomes hard. We take it down through a sequence of events and cut it off into what we call logs, which are about 80 inches long and about 14 inches in diameter, weigh about 6,000 pounds. And then we're going to cut it again and we're going to take it through our extrusion press. The logs are cut into billets or ingots about 26 inches long and weigh nearly one ton. Each billet is heated to more than 1,600 degrees and loaded into an extrusion press. Here, a hole is punched in the middle and a ram starts pushing it through a die approximately three and a half inches in diameter. On the opposite end of the press, the copper comes out of the die into this water trough where a gripper head grabs it and starts pulling. What you see here, this is our Krasny runout. Basically what we're doing is pulling a tube 190 foot long underwater. Out of that big ingot of red hot copper. That's correct. About a three and a half inch OD and about a 150 wall, which is the wall thickness. About three and a half inches in diameter, right? That's correct. Once it's done extruding, the fuller head's gonna go back against the press and that tube's gonna come up here on the table. That's why these are all laid out like that, right? That is correct. And then these mother tubes then will be used to make smaller diameter pieces of copper tubing, right? That's correct. And we'll do 700 to 850 of these extrusions a day, which will make about a million pounds a day. The tubes are then drawn or stretched through a series of large wheels to make them longer and thinner. The tubes are coiled, straightened out, and stretched again several times until they reach a predetermined diameter. On this run, the tubes are 5 eighths of an inch in diameter, cut 15 feet in length. Some of the tubes are sent through a tempering process that softens the copper and makes it flexible. These tubes are cut and packaged into 50-foot coils. 
The tubes are now on their way to the job site where they'll soon be used to carry water to the faucets of your new house.